this is absolutely ridiculous. I mean, every time I'm trying something with a different encoder, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It is really, really, really frustrating. Let me get a new link on Facebook as well. Come on, work. And you know, it is what is the most frustrating is that whenever I do a private, um, whenever I do a private live. I pretty much have no issues with the encoder. Whenever I do a public live, that's when it all starts going to shreds. Anyway, hi, Tina. Um, and it, it is really, really irritating when that happens. You know, I mean, they say that, yeah, we fixed and we give you so many things, but every time that something changes, something doesn't work, something doesn't. Anyway, let's get to um, the, the live at hand. I, I hate it when it just kind of gets all my mood messed up. Anyway, uh, number one, please excuse the... The box is in the corner. I'm still in the process. Hi, Joaquim. I'm still in the process of uh, taking photos and measuring and uploading and all that for the store. Uh, talking of which, um, remember that uh, today, tomorrow, and Monday, there will be um, a sale on the Kaliana website. And it's a 15% off sale. And it works on everything that I have uploaded in the store to present. And I will keep uploading some more things today, tomorrow, and Monday. Um, the only uh, categories that the discount doesn't apply are the sashes and the clearances. And uh, I have posted the um, coupon code on my Facebook page yesterday. So if you want to take advantage of this, go ahead and check my Facebook page, pick up your coupon. And um, one of the things that is going to, uh, to be a new uh, feature from now on, uh, twice a month, I will be giving away um, a uh, value coupon and it will be announced on Facebook and it will be depending on what it is but generally it will be between one and three uh times that it can be used that means oh, <laughs> thank you <laughs> uh, that means that um the first three people who try to use it will be the only one ones who will be able to use it it will all work only three times so I will announce when I'm uh, putting up the coupon. Uh, it might be during one of my uh, tutorials that I post on YouTube. But it is, you know, to, to have a little bit more engagement. And uh, I think it is, uh, it is a fun thing, thing to do. Um, then, as you know, uh, I have been having all kinds of fatigue issues. And... Um, I already, I decided to go for all the doctor appointments I have been postponing since pretty much last fall. Because with all the whisper issues I had and the cat issues I had, I really couldn't afford to, to go to the doctors and uh, leave him alone for an extended period of time. Because whenever I have to go do um, uh, all tests, all kinds of tests and scans and all that, that's pretty much, I'll be gone for six hours, seven hours. And I didn't dare to leave him alone by himself. Uh, right now, um, there will be a friend who might be coming to stay with him if to dog sit if I have a longer, hi Fran, a longer um, 
day at the doctor's. I did schedule three of the appointments on the other ones. I'm waiting because the doctors have been on vacation, so they are now doing their full schedules. So hopefully they'll figure out. And there was one thing that I had not thought that might be causing it. And uh, my uh, primary care's uh, assistant nurse actually said that she's going to talk to her about it, um, was uh, to check my implants. As you know, I had breast reconstruction surgery and yeah, I do have implants and uh, it's been almost nine years. And they said that some of the fatigue symptoms and stuff might be due a ruptured implant. I don't know, because it's very hard. I have the, the type that's uh, called uh, memory gel, the so-called gummy bears, the, the newest kinds, high soile. Uh, that theoretically, if they break, no piece can come out of it. They are like exactly like when you cut a gummy bear in two, nothing comes, leaks or anything. But, you know, I guess I'll, I'll have to go for an MRI to check that as well. So hopefully by the end of September, mid-October, we'll figure out what the heck is wrong with me. Because my fatigue has reached really, 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 really bad uh, levels. And um, I'll get to this in here in a little bit. That will be part of my pep talk. Uh, before that, uh, I do have still leftover from the past month. And I will be trying to, yes, this is Whisper here who had to come here and be with me. And probably we'll see Connor before long. <laughs> uh, but um, yeah, there are a few things that I have left over from last month. Um, I will strive to, to finish them and to do um, the tutorial, especially on the um, uh, new sanding rig. I didn't even manage to put it up yet. I worked really hard in the last week uh, on the um, sponsor tutorials that um, are released uh, fully today because they are very, very um, complicated and very, very long. I mean, the, it's practically for my tier one sponsors, it's the Tiger's Eye for Tiger's Eye and for my tier two sponsors, it's the Maramamba. And uh, the thing is that in order to be able to do Maramamba, um, you need to know how to do tiger's eye, you know, colors, because Maramamba is a type of mineral where you find all the colors of tiger eye uh, combined. And uh, it's found only in Western Australia. Um, there's only one specific location. Peter site is also a byproduct of tiger's eye decomposition, but it's different and it's found in several more places in the world. While Maramamba, that's why it's called Maramamba from the name of that uh, specific uh, mountain. Uh, so in order to create Maramamba, you need to know again, uh, how to make all the colors of tiger's eyes. So for the tiger's eye, for the tier one sponsors, uh, there's the, the golden tiger's eye in like three different patterns and the, the red tiger's eye, the green tiger's eye and the blue tiger's eye. Um, and then the variegated uh, tiger's eye. So remember that I already said five of them. Um, and for each of them, I had to do, you know, how to create the stacks, how to do the whole thing. And then for each of them, they were uh, at least uh, between eight and 10 cabochons uh, to make, to bake, to sand, to buff. Uh, and then with the Maramamba, again, there are like three different uh, patterns and one more. So yeah, it's been a, a, a huge uh, piece of work. Uh, and um, I didn't really have time to go into the YouTube tutorials uh, much. But uh, I will definitely this month uh, post the um, the sanding rig, the, the newest uh, thing that I have found. Um, I did try it, it works, but as I said, I didn't manage to do the full setup because I'll have to do it on that 
table behind me with the tripod with the regular camera on and and uh, all that and um, then um, I need to put up the tutorial with the um, rock tumbler again all my experiments have been finished but I need to do the whole rigging and I keep that in the kitchen because there is practically no room where to put it here uh, and that means that I need again to rig the tripod the Canon camera and all that because there's no way I can drag the stormtrooper there not with not all 35 pounds of it <laughs> and um, then uh, another one will be to um, to um, do it yourself a shellac varnish I got everything that I need for it um, and doing that also I will go through uh, the process of varnishing but um, as I thought more on this I decided that it would be a good idea to do a l l short series of you know 101 for beginners and not only if you want uh, dealing with the uh, clay types of clay conditioning and um, all that and um, you know varnishing sanding buffing and all those other things um, and then of course I have a few pieces that I need to finish like the the beads for that uh, flame pendant thingy and um, a few more other things and we'll get to that and then I have obviously more projects uh, for you and more techniques uh, remember I told you if I could do a tutorial a day for three day for three years and I would still have stuff to show you and not only that but let's not forget that there is always no new stuff coming up uh, talking of which I just uh, received um, the new waxes from Prima marketing um, that are about double the price of the art alchemy waxes but they are like more than triple the quantity uh, I still need to test them because I need to test them how they work on a uh, raw clay how they go through the process of baking uh, how they go on baked clay how long do they need to harden and if they can be buffed or you know all that that stuff after which I will start uh, I will make uh, some um, tutorials with them and then um, I will have them uh, also um, I'm working with Trish on all this so after I'm done with all my testing and my tutorials I will let her know so she can have time to uh, have them in stock in case you want to to try them and as you know Trish has generally speaking the cheapest uh, prices of everything possible all right now let's go to the um, pep talk and um, I wanted to touch uh, this subject because in the last this subject and then the other one about the political correctness uh, in the last few months I've had and I've met so many of you online and it's so wonderful and so awesome and uh, again I wouldn't be able to do everything that I'm doing without your support and it's more appreciated that you can even imagine um, it's just that you know I'm not much of a expansive person to keep telling you all day long that I love you I try to <laughs> prove it by my actions if you want but um, the thing is that as you know my channel is primarily not only but primarily uh, targeted to um, ladies over 45 and that is uh, actually my primary audience to be very honest my primary audience is um, ladies over 55 uh, but um, it's after 45 because uh, there are several factors coming in here one of them is the fact that uh, generally women and this is a truth and it's just a medical thing it's not TMI or anything 
but uh, generally women after the age of 45 due to the changes in their bodies they are more prone to if you want uh, various changes in their joints um, in their pain level uh, because uh, in case you didn't know um, for women estrogen is a um, natural pain management hormone if you want um, and they are brain uh, receptors the opi opioid receptors in the brain that the estrogen kind of binds with and this is why generally speaking women otherwise they would die during birth because of the shock of the pain but they don't because of that estrogen that's why generally speaking men do not have such a high pain tolerance as women do but uh, once you get past a certain age and due to the changes in your life i'm not going to say the m word uh but the level of estrogen in your body starts uh, decreasing and this is why you start feeling more aches and pains in spots on your body that you did not uh feel them before so oh my god i got everybody not saying a thing i hope i didn't mess up anything because i know that i had the chat out let me make sure it's still out yes it is okay uh so um and because of that, uh, after 45, all kinds of issues that before did not hinder us uh, start uh, rearing their ugly head. And we start having, okay, thank you. Um, we start having all kinds of uh, joint pains and muscle aches and headaches even. Uh, and that comes because it besides the estrogen as a pain management uh natural pain management factor in the human body it also regulates a whole you know how hormones generally are have such a humongous role that medicine is not able was not able until now to discover everything that they can do and um uh, another one of the roles of estrogen is the whole thing, you know, with the bone density and all that. And that's when we start uh, losing bone density and uh, our metabolism changes and we are not able to assimilate the calcium and other micro minerals. And, um, you know, hence the lower bone density osteopenia, osteoporosis, that also give uh, a lot of pain. So getting back to what I was talking about, my channel is uh, geared mostly towards um, uh, women over 45. Um, that's not to say that I am not uh, trying to communicate, communicate and share my knowledge with younger people as well. But... Um, most of the time i am focusing just because i am going through through this uh, myself um and also focused on uh, people who yeah i was going to say that in a minute minute um uh, people who due to the aging process or due to other uh, health issues have a certain level certain degree of disability and um this is why most of my my materials out there they are focused primarily um, on how to do things the easiest way. And as Soile said, um, it's also and people don't realize uh, that. Yeah, because remember that. Uh, men also have estrogen and they have uh, testosterone and testosterone can play the same um the same um, role but um getting back to what i was saying um and what i said that uh, my largest audience group is people over 55 
As Soyla said, um, generally, once you age and when you near retirement, um, you start having more time to pursue, and especially after after you retire, if you don't have too many grandkids to take care of, um, you start having more time to pursue uh, your hobbies, for one. And for two, the process of um, creation, generally speaking, helps a lot when you have uh, various uh, disabilitating issues because it kind of um, makes you be able for the moment to forget um, all these pains and aches that are part of your daily life. So um, you can if you remember, I had last year um, a compassion uh, video um, and I was explaining how important the process of creation in one's life and creation and nurturing in one's life is from the psychological uh, point of view. And that is because um, it gives one's life a purpose. And one of the hardest things in life that uh, honestly, not many are able to survive um, if they lose it. Um, it can lead to such a horrible depression and to such deep emotional issues that it's uh, among one of the main causes of uh, suicide. Now, of course, it depends how, what is the a perceived purpose, you know, uh, in one's life. Um, obviously, in a younger, in a teenager's person's life, it would be more like, oh, the love of my life, the person I love, if they don't love me, I'm going to be crushed. But um, exactly, that is that is very true. Um, and the thing that creativity and pursuing a hobby uh, does to you is to give you a purpose. Uh, and especially for people who retire because they lose one of the, they live going to work, you know, and one of the dangers of retirement is uh, starting to feeling, to feel that you're not needed anymore. And, um, any type of craft, any type of hobby that you might uh, hide on, uh, that you might uh, start getting um, into, will help you achieve, get back that feeling of uh, purpose. Um, and it's, it depends, it's, it's from person to person what that per purpose is uh, perceived as. But sometimes just planting a flower and waiting for it to, you know, to grow and to can give one uh, a purpose. If you remember, uh, there was in, and I'm trying to remember, when was it? Was it in, it was in one of the comedy shows. I'm trying to remember. When one of the, the, the characters of the show was in a hospital, and then uh, they couldn't move and then there was somebody else near the window and they kept telling the other ones what they could see through the window of that little girl is crossing the street and all that. And one morning they wake up and, uh, and there was nobody anymore in that bed and they found out that the, the person passed away. And... Um, a nurse went to the window and wanted to pull the curtain and the other people in the room, the other patient, oh, no, no, don't tell us what you can see. And she was like, it's just a blank brick wall. So, as I said, the purpose is not necessarily what is there, but is what you see there. I don't know if that makes any sense. Um, hi, Tanya. Hi, Cherry. Yay, from Scotland. That is awesome. Um, 
so having a hobby is very 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 important then um getting back to what Joachim said uh, certain things can only be lived through experience if anybody would uh, do a study and I did not do any kind of statistics this is simply by um, my real life observations uh, the majority and I I think that it's at least 70%, if not more, of the polymer clay, clayers, artists, crafters, hobbyists, however you want to call them, are people well over 45, um, including most of the great names um, are well over 45. And that is because all of the previously mentioned uh, things. Um, also, some other issues, you know, I mean, the, the, our pioneers, of course, they started um, uh, showing us, they started working with this medium back in the 80s and the 90s. And, well, it's been a while. So, obviously, they went through the process of aging. Um, so yeah most of the players are elderly and that is an undeniable fact uh, and just this is just because of the way life is the elderly have more time for it it's wonderful and and have more patience uh because in this um branch if you want to to go as an artist you need a lot of dedication and a lot of time and a lot of patience to wait because even the hardest work, unless you have tons of money to start with, uh, so you can do a very serious marketing and paid art advertising uh, campaign, uh, it takes time and you need to be among the best to be able to achieve if you want to succeed as an artist oh absolutely absolutely Don. i'm i'm not talking of course okay fran you go to sleep and i hope you're feeling better and better and better every day um but uh, yeah it, it's a matter of experience and i know that there's a generation discrepancy and obviously the younger crowd um, likes different things than the older crowd uh, likes and very few of the younger crowd have the time or the pay patience or the dedication to uh, to pursue a career in the um, polymer clay art or other arts and then comes the the other thing is that is the expense <laughs> thank you don and i'm going to get to that um it's the expense and it's different when you have to you know keep up with the daily jobs expenses because yeah we go to work to make money but we need to spend money to go to work I mean, it's a known fact. Um, I still remember, oh gosh, when it was like 14 years ago. Uh, 14 years ago when uh, me and my ex-husband moved to Texas because he got a promotion and he got moved from Tinker Air Force Base to Laughlin Air Force Base in Southwest Texas. And uh, of course, I had to give up my job I had here and we went down there. And now the thing is that Tinker Air Force Base has a lot of civilian personnel, so a lot of uh, civilian uh, departments. While Laughlin is mostly a, a mostly military base and generally for someone to get a job at the base, there's something that's called military spouse preference and that is to help because military people generally every two years have to pack up and go move to another base and move to uh, and obviously their spouses 
are very incapacitated in being able to pursue a career because they have to follow their spouse. So this military spouse preference is in order to help the, the military families. And um, obviously it would have been practically impossible for me to find a job at that military base. So I started looking around town now uh, where I live in Del Rio, it's a town on the border with Mexico, about 90% um, Latinos. And um, because of that, the salaries were high, um, were not very high. Uh, I mean, the generally the, the income average in that town was not that terrific. And uh, when I did find a couple of jobs, um, me and my husband, we stayed and we put things on the paper and we realized that uh, if I would take that job, considering the expenses that we would incur, because, you know, it's gas money to get there, their lunch money, then you need to keep an appearance and then it would also, it would have pushed us into the next tax bracket. So we would have paid more taxes. If I would have taken a job, we would have lost money, actually. And hi, Galina. Thank you so much. Um, so, yeah, sometimes you have to, to get back to what I was saying. When you're younger, you have to kind of have a budget for a uh, high Um for the expenses that you need in order to go to work and also to have a life you know and when you're older uh especially after you're retire retired or if you got disabled there are not so many expenses on that and uh, you kind of can start funneling uh, whatever money you can put aside towards your hobby so there are way more opportunities. There are way more experiments. There's way more fun to have with this when, once you get past a certain age, that, that's what I was uh, trying to say. But um, on the other hand, um, and here comes the, the pep talk. Um, I've got quite a bit of uh, people reaching out to me. Um, People who are elderly, people who are not so elderly, people who are more or less disabled, um, to, who, who ask me to tell them my secret of being able to, you know, do everything I, I do. And I don't know. If it's really a secret, you know, I think that it depends to, it depends of everybody's um, internal makeup, if you want. And it also depends on how much you want something and how much you start accepting what is uh, happening and um, the idea is that yes um, especially after you get uh, and Galina is um, after you get past a certain age and uh, or after you start getting serious health issues uh, it's very hard to get yourself motivated, um, especially if you have chronic pain. Because I have gone through a lot of stuff in my life and um, a lot of unpleasant life events and all kinds of things. And one thing I can tell you, um, Eight and a half years, no, it's actually nine years ago. Nine years ago, pretty much. 
past nine years ago. When I got diagnosed with uh, breast cancer, yeah, it was horrible. I mean, it's not something that Yay, very good, excellent. I am really happy for her. Um, but I'm not going to go into this right now. Um, but um, the thing is that, as I said, when I was diagnosed with cancer, it, it's something horrible. It but somehow you rally yourself. You get managed through all that to get yourself together because you have to keep going on, you know? I mean, one of the things that... I don't know if it, I can even say it irritated me. It was kind of leaving me without a... You're so strong. No, I'm not. You know, it would be like, what do you want me to do? Go sit in the middle of the street and wait to die. I have to go through this. Uh, it's one of those things that you don't know how strong you are until being strong is the only option on one hand. But on the other, on the other hand, you know, the thing with oh, you're so brave and so strong. No. Brave is somebody who knows uh, that they have a challenge to face, they have a danger to face, and choose to face it instead of turning around and running. But when you have something like this, like a cancer diagnosis, like a... Um, multiple sclerosis or, or something, you know, one of these things. It's not like you have a choice. You have no choice. It's the only way to go. So it's not bravery. It's simple survival. And I went through all this, you know, I, I guess I did not have the time to get depressed. The same thing as I lived in communist Romania. I lived in a communist regime for 28 years. And uh, time and time and time afterwards, you know, decades afterwards, and uh, as I was getting older and I could see the, the world around me, more and more people would get depressed and would need uh, medication for depression and would need... Don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to uh, diminish in any way depression. But I kept thinking, well, I lived for 28 years in a regime that was horribly oppressive. Um, and thank you, Aung San Amun. Uh, and it was, you know, a regime of fear. And um, a regime of hunger, of cold. I mean, I still remember when we had, at, especially in the last years of communism, before the anti-communist revolution, we had, um, we had money. I mean, money were not a problem. We just didn't have what to buy with them. Food was ratioed. Um, God, I will remember for the rest of my life the, the quantities. I mean, you could buy uh, 12 eggs a month per person, um, a quart of vegetable oil, um, two pounds of meat, uh, and meat that meant anything from chicken feet to pork chops, didn't matter, it was meat. Um, a quart and a half of, uh, not a quart and a half, but three pounds of sugar and uh, things like this. I mean, even like two toilet paper rolls a month and you could not buy them from anywhere else because there are these little neighborhood uh, grocery stores and convenience stores 
and there was a list you had to go and register and you could buy all these things that were ratioed only from that store and whenever you were buying they had these lists you had to present your id and they would check you out but that was not the only problem the only problem was that let's say for this specific uh, area of the city that had a hundred thousand inhabitants um so that would mean let's say um 300,000 pounds of meat necessary. That specific store would only get 50,000 for a month. So you kind of had to go and people who had the grandparents were the most fortunate because you had to go to have somebody for your family because a member of the family could get everything for the whole family uh, if they were registered as living at the same address. Uh, but you had to go stay in line from midnight, from 2 a.m. And wait there and hope that by the time the store opens, uh, they would have gotten some meat and that you would be among the first ones to be able to, to get any. Uh, and you know, and we didn't have uh, heating, we would have heating and power for like three hours a day or uh, cold water for two hours a day and warm water for two hours a week and stuff like that. But where I wanted to get with it, uh, I do not remember, you know, unless there was somebody had died or somebody had divorced or things like this, people complaining that they are depressed. And later on, when I was trying to study this phenomenon of, as time goes by, more and more of the society gets depressed, I realized that why we did not get depressed was because we didn't have time for it. We were too busy trying to survive. So even if we might have been it was somewhere on such a far away back burner that we didn't have time for it. And it's the same pretty much when you get this kind of uh, diagnostic, you are too busy trying to survive to have time to get depressed. But a year after the, the first flurry, the first storm of the treatment, you know, after the first four surgeries or yeah, four surgeries after chemo and axillary lymph node dissection and all that. Um, that's when the chronic pain started happening. And uh, I was already a little bit after because, you know, the surgery kind of gives you the, oh, yeah, it's gone. Let's hope they took all of it. And then I had chemo and let's hope at that. that took care of whatever other chemo um, cancer cells might be might have might have spread but um once once you go through that yeah you do have a lot of pain because there's so many surgeries so many other things but the thing is that you know that that pain would end oh thank you cherry uh and you know that that pain that you have from a surgery, from chemo, from it will run for a while, but then it would end. But then when the chronic pain sets in, it's not the same. Because after a certain age and um, especially due to certain medical conditions, uh, most of the chronic pain is due to degenerative diseases. And what does a degenerative disease mean? A degenerative disease means, in a nutshell and in layman's terms, uh, you'll never get better. It will only get worse. So knowing that um, there is no end to it, it's so much different, the, the impact it has on your mind and on your emotional being. And it's so hard 
to not lose yourself trying to survive this whole process. Um, because chronic pain is there with you every day and every hour of the day of the end of the night and every second. Um, it gets to a point that you don't say anymore, I wish I had one single day in which I wouldn't be in pain. No, you get to say, I wish I had an hour. Because it takes such a toll on your willingness to carry on. It's, it is so grinding on your soul and on your patience and on your any good emotions you might have. Emotions of love, emotions of compassion, emotions of understanding, emotions of everything, you know, because they say that with every disease, there are the, I forgot how many there are, stages of grief, you know, like the same as like when somebody dies and the first is the denial, then, you know, the negotiation, then the anger and so on and so forth until you get to the final one that is the, the acceptance. And, um, but that is a general thing. And the general thing uh, doesn't apply to everybody. And that's also one of my um, observations. Uh, some people at one point in life, they will go through some type of life event that will trigger these X number of stages of grief. And it all depends on, actually, let me, so I know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, I have chemo brain, remember? And sometimes it's just, I know it's there. The information is right there. Okay. All right, there are five stages. Um, it's the Kubler-Ross and David Kessler uh, model. Uh, there are also seven, and there are, anyway. But uh, uh, the first is the denial, then the anger, then bargaining, depression, and then acceptance. And the whole thing is not everybody goes through all the stages. Some people get stuck to one of them. And depending on which of the stages you got stuck on determines how your inner self will be changed by this life event and how your personality will develop and thus your life will develop. Now, this is not a stock in stone, you know, written in stone because another life event can happen and you may be going again through the same stages and then a stop on a different one and then you change again remember life is full of change that is part of the process of creation uh stagnation is part of the process of the negation of creation it's kind of like if you want the difference between uh, light and dark, good and evil, and whatever. But we always change throughout our life. And depending on where you are in the process of grief after one of the life events, and um, aging is a life event, um, will determine how your life, <clears throat> excuse me, will develop and what path you will take and how you will deal with the new normal. They always call it new normal. And I, I find it completely absurd because that's not normal. I mean, yeah, you can get to get used to it. You can get to, to accept it. But uh, and also some people sometimes skip. You don't have to feel all the, the stages. <clears throat> but anyway, um, as I was saying in my process, um, of going through the whole cancer thing, um, when I got to the chronic pain, 
And that is when I actually started feeling depressed. Just because there was no end in sight to it. And it can really, really, really erode everything that you have uh, in terms of emotions, in terms of even ethics, in terms of empathy, in terms of sympathy, you name it. Um, the other problem is that, unfortunately, um, in our society, there have been um, so many who took advantage of um, pain management when they did not need pain management, that they made it so much harder for people who actually need pain management to get the relief they need. But that's a discussion about something completely else and I'm not going to, to go through it. Um, and we get to this point, uh, and that is exactly what I wanted to, to discuss, it, and that's the, the pep talk. How do you get to be motivated? How do you get to keep on going on? Is it a secret? Not really. Uh, if you are at that stage that you don't know how to keep on going on, try to analyze, Google that five stages of grief, seven stages of grief, whatever it is, and um, try to understand in which of them are you stuck and how that influences your way of thinking how that influences your desire of um, getting up and getting motivated and try and find the purpose that is you I don't know how to put it otherwise. Um, whenever the purpose is someone or something or a cause around you, it is a very uh, commendable purpose to dedicate yourself to the good of others, to the good of a cause, to the good of humanity and whatever. But it comes a time when you realize that if you don't dedicate at least for a while that purpose to be yourself, you will not be able to go on. Try to find out what it is that yourself needs, not from others, from yourself. Try to, fi try to find out, are you stuck in the anger? Try to find out what's the reasoning behind the anger. And the thing, the way that I do it, I'm going to tell you the way that I do it. Um, we have a problem. Okay, or I have a problem. What is causing the problem? So the problem is here. What is causing the problem? And does the problem have a solution? So in order to get rid of the problem, you need to act on one of these two, either to what is the cause of the problem or to what can eliminate the problem. If you try to work on the problem itself, you cannot eliminate the effect of a cause without eliminating the cause, because if you do, then that will keep repeating if you still have the cause there. Now, there can be also the um, possibility that you cannot eliminate the cause, and there is no solution for the problem. You know, like... Um, 
So again, I'm going to give you an example of myself. Uh, I have that cervical spine slew of issues, okay, because it was uh, brought over by the five years of aromatase inhibitor therapy I had to take, the one that leaks the estrogen out of your body, because the, all the five types of cancer I had in my breast were all estrogen positive. That means they were feeding on estrogen. And I was lucky because they were like 96, 98% estrogen positive. So in these cases, if you get hormone uh, repression therapy, that really helps if there's any cell that has escaped surgery or chemo, it will be starved. There's also the cases when they change their <laughs> hormone receptor, but that's a different thing. Um, so because I had that, I went through like a fast forward, the M word, and that caused a very rapid, uh, rapidly advancing osteoarthritis and degenerative changes in my cervical spine. So I know the cause. Can I eliminate it? No. And I cannot go back in time. I cannot undo the damages that were done. It was necessary to take that medication. You know. Now, is there a solution for it? Well, yes and no. Because, uh, yeah, there would be surgeries I could undertake. But... If these type of surgeries are uh, like 95% uh, success when it comes to the lumbar spine, when it comes to the cervical spine, they only have like a 50% uh, rate of success in, you know, the final result. And um, I'm sorry, I will have to have several surgeries because my spine is messed up between the first and the last level in the neck. And they cannot do too many in one surgery. Um, at my age, with my issues, I'm sorry, I'm not willing to take so much risk. Because when they go work on your cervical spine, they get in through here. There's so much stuff that can go wrong. If there was a higher rate of success, yeah, I would... I would do it, but for just that, I'm not going to risk it. Um, so I try to do whatever I can, you know, I mean, keep taking supplements with glucosamine, chondroitrin and stuff, keep going to get, because, uh, you know, you can get shots and nerve blocks, but again, those only have 50% chance of success. Um, but they are not as dangerous as the surgeries. So just for that 50% chance, I still go and do them. So I'm trying to do whatever of the solution to the problem I have available to myself. But that doesn't mean much. The problem will still be there. The problem will still be able to affect me. So the only other thing that I can do is to learn to live with it. Because, again, what are you going to do? Just go in the middle of the road and wait there to die? No. You know, I was given, I survived so many things in my life that you have no idea. If I would start telling you about, I will probably be here for hours. But, uh, and every time I felt it was a miracle that I survived. survived. I, I felt that it was a miracle that I still got more chances to, to live. And I felt that there was a purpose for, for that. I still had to do something. There was a reason. So I always tried to find a reason. And sometimes, you know, when I was giving lectures about the uh, law, the whole 
thing with the law of attraction and the principles of causality, you know, and a lot of things about existentialism and stuff. I kept telling people, everybody thinks that their destiny is they they are supposed to have a destiny and they are hoping to have a huge destiny that they will make some huge impact on the world that they will have it doesn't work that way um depending on what your belief system is you know if it's god's plan or the divine plan or whatever you believe in um you might not perceive it as your purpose being so important but in fact it might be more important than you think for the good of humanity because uh, for example at one point you might cross paths with somebody in the grocery store and you automatically you know you smile and say hi how are you and the person smiles back and you might be chatting for a little bit or you might not you just cross paths but you have no idea that that person actually when he was in such a terrible depression and was going through so much uh, stuff and they were actually thinking to commit suicide and just the fact that you smiled to them made them reconsider what they had in plan and because they didn't commit suicide, they went ahead and actually discovered something for the good of humanity or later gave birth to a child who's supposed to be, you know, I mean, there's so much causality. And maybe you were born just so you would be in that time, in that place to smile to that person and say, hi, how are you? It's that thing, you know, the, the butterfly effect thing. Humanity, as we know it, would not exist 200 years from now if you didn't have been in that specific place at that specific time to be able to smile to that person. You know? So, uh, things like that, and, and that is the thing, try and find the reason, try and find the purpose, there is a reason why you are still here, it might be that you can advance your skill it might be that at one point but believe me when it happens you'll know because you will start feeling you'll start feeling way more um that life is worth living and yeah i know it, it's one of the things that drives nuts any breast or not necessarily breast cancer survivor or patient is the thing with be positive well you know you know i had somebody telling me that when i was going through all that i would tell them yeah i'm positive that i have cancer and i'm positive that it sucks anything else i should be positive about and it was not me being negative but you know positivity does not in fact medical studies have shown that uh, being positive does not influence in any way the rate of healing the rate of survival or anything it just makes people happier that's the only thing um, i personally believe that realism and being able to look truth straight in the face without trying to sugarcoat it, without trying to hide from it, without refusing to see or hear unpleasant truths, um, 
helps you adjust to whatever life throws at you and be able to survive all those things without your inner self being destroyed in the process, if that makes any sense. And if that helps any of you who have uh, messaged me or emailed me about this. So my advice to you would be take a step back, assess your situation, see exactly where are you stuck? What is the cause of that? What would be the solution? Obviously, sometimes the cause can be fixed. I mean, if the cause of something is a, a broken relationship or finding a newer relationship that's more meaningful than the old one can fix the, the problem. But let me not digress. So identify what stage you're in, identify what is your problem, what is the cause, what would be possible solutions. Try to um, do some uh, damage mitigation in those and whatever you cannot mitigate, start accepting and learn how to live with it. And it makes things much easier and then also Try to be a little bit more egotistical. Find in life what makes you happy. And as long as it doesn't harm anybody in the process, go for it. Life is way too short to sacrifice anything just for the sake of other people to like you. Just for the sake of being accepted by a certain a group of people just for the sake of anything. It's too darn short. Go ahead and live it. As I said, as long as you don't harm anybody. It's your life. You won't have a second chance. When you're young, you believe that the world is out there and you're going to be immortal. As you age, you realize that no. And next year, next month, next day, next hour, you might not be there. So enjoy everything that you can while you can. That's my advice. Now, to come, and I'm going to try to be very short because I uh, told myself I don't want to be more than an hour and a half at this, and I am nearing 1030. Um, I'm going to get to the second subject, and that is the um, how can political cor correctness uh, damage the evolution of an artist? And um, I'm going to tell you uh, very easy. Unfortunately, political correctness started, and I'm not going to go into the whole details on how the whole society is being manipulated to uh, get as the end result the individual that is, you know, the slacktivist who thinks that clicking like, a like on Facebook is going to um, fix the problems of the world and that, you know, if you cannot say something nice, don't say anything. Uh, because the whole concept, if you cannot say something nice, don't say anything, leads as I was talking before, leads to stagnation. Uh, if you have a favorite artist, if you have somebody in your entourage, if you have a friend, uh, if you have a family member, somebody that you admire who is an artist, it doesn't matter, not, not just an artist. Being politically correct when they ask your opinion Doing the, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything, is the greatest damage that you can do to them. And think about this. If an artist does something and everybody around them keeps saying, oh, I just love what you're doing. It's, 
so awesome everything is so fine everything i love all your eyes i love when how you do this i uh, this is so beautiful this is so gorgeous and um Tuna, i'm sure that you have seen over and over you know some stuff that you would think oh gosh that looks like a second grader made it there's no sense of proportion or nothing and then you'd still see you know the the whole um, um oh that's so beautiful oh you did a great job you did <laughs> hi teresa uh all that good stuff um that that artist will not know that what they are doing is not right will keep working on what they are doing believing that what they are doing is so awesome and so beautiful and so everything just because everybody close to them tells them oh whatever you're doing is so awesome and then when they are actually confronted with the real life with the real world when they start bringing their stuff out for sale for exhibitions for and nobody likes it because it's not good because nobody told them what they were doing wrong because everybody told them that they were doing good that's a killer right there i'm not saying go criticizing and putting down everything that somebody's doing if they are not fine no there is a thing with constructive criticism and with with the risk that you might not make them feel good because here you have the whole also the the ego thing of an artist uh but if you really care about somebody that's what i'm trying to say if you really care about somebody and if you really care for them to succeed and if you really care about their future and about their development as an artist and about everything point to them you not necessarily don't tell them oh this is ugly or this is horrible you had a horrible uh, color choice no tell them i think you need to work a little bit on this part um uh, it's great what you did exactly to killed true honesty and reality yes exactly uh, but try to find a way to tell them but tell them don't let them live a fantasy that will later kill their dream maybe kill themselves you know because they will be spending years of their life believing that they are doing something good when they aren't and when they get to the point where they expect recognition they will not get it i mean it's the worst thing you can do to somebody for the sake of not hurting their feelings you are hurting their future i mean it's and people don't realize that just because I mean, there are so many levels on all this political, cor politically correct uh, thing. Try to think about this, please. If you love somebody, and people who study with me know that if I find that they did something wrong, I will tell them. I'm not going to beat around the bush to say, oh, yeah, this is pretty. Oh, yeah, this is nice. No, I'll tell them, hey, that's not good. You need to work on that. You know, and I can tell you that pretty much everybody who has worked with me, because I told them they had work to do and they did work and they applied themselves and they got better and better and better and better because I care too much about them to lie to them. 
that is the the essence of it all so uh, well try to gently uh, gently direct them towards uh, something else on a tangent i can tell you something i have yet to meet the person who is good not good at anything everybody has a strength you know everybody has something that they are good at and uh, then that's the other thing you know if you keep telling someone that they are awesome at what they are doing when they aren't and because they think that they are awesome they keep just doing what they are doing without trying other things so you can suggest that they try something else and talk enthusiastically about it they might be a genius in another domain but they will never try that domain because they believe that what they are doing is awesome does that make sense so yeah be be absolutely i i always say there's always room for improvement no matter what you do but uh, my point here is if you care about somebody do not lie to them just for the sake of political correctness and just for the sake of sake of not hurting their feelings because it's not a good thing it's not a constructive thing it does not help them in any way on the contrary it hurts them it harms them in the long run so i am going to pretty much wrap it up here and i hope that you enjoyed my little and as i said i'm going to to start adding more of this kind of uh, subjects uh, in my monthly chats with, with you uh just because i started getting so many more um emails and messages and requests for suggestions and advice and stuff so i thought that it would be a good idea to to add all these and um, if you have yourself any kind of issue and any kind of uh question and any kind of feel free to message me uh as i said lately i'm only able to answer in the afternoons because i'm trying to take advantage of the morning thank you Ansanam. uh thank you sherry um and uh, i do the monthly chat every month on the first saturday of the month and that usually at nine o'clock uh, central daylight time so it's not a fixed date it's just that the first saturday of every month i have this monthly chat with my uh, subscribers and when i ask when i answer questions and and talk about my plans and all that so i hope you have a beautiful labor day weekend and to do my little spiel at the end don't forget that there's a sale going on on kaliana design i'm going to put the um, the link here and maybe i'll put the the coupon code uh too uh, sporting related no i think that when you cannot do it anymore yourself then start teaching others how to do it uh and then the last time i feel remember that i do also have a sponsor program that's kind of like patreon only i don't pay any middleman <laughs> Uh, and you can reach it through my website. You just go to the become a sponsor and look there. What are the perks? And I might be adding soon another tier. Um, and also there's a donation uh, button on my website and on my blog. And you can also help me by purchasing whatever you're purchasing from polyclayplay.com. If you go through my affiliate link on my website and also whenever you have to buy something from Amazon, if you go to Amazon through my Amazon influencer store. 
So, um, thank you so very much and have a great weekend. And I will see you tomorrow with the Clay With Me Sunday. And hopefully I'll finish the little dragon by then, but I still have to finish my, as I said, my sponsor tutorials that are taking a lot of time. Uh, but I'll see you all tomorrow. Remember, it's going to be between 12 and 12.30 Central Daylight Time, noonish. Uh, I'll see how I wrap things on my end. So I'll see you all tomorrow and happy Labor Day. Happy Clean.